Did you know? Stars actually don't twinkle. Why, when we look up at the sky at night, do some stars appear to twinkle? Even nursery rhymes sing about it, twinkle, twinkle, little star. We love things that twinkle. In fact, the word twinkle implies a constant change. We've always been told the universe is vast, but what if we want to make it more tangible? Yes, you read that right. If the sun were hollowed out, it could hold about 1.3 million Earths. When we look up at the sky at night, imagine a star spanning the universe, very far from Earth, like a perfect point of light. A photon has traveled a journey of thousands of years and penetrated the Earth's atmosphere to finally reach your eye. There are many different temperature layers in the air. There is a place called the thermosphere, where the energy from the sun is absorbed by ozone, causing this part to heat up. Further down, the temperature drops and continues to drop. Not only that, but the ground is not heated evenly by the sun. Some areas reflect light, such as water and snow, while other areas absorb light, such as dark regions. This causes the air to heat at different rates. So, these air masses, hot air rises because it expands, reducing its density and increasing its buoyancy. The rising air mass does not leave a vacuum behind but is replaced by other air masses. This is convection. The entire air mass is moving. This is always happening throughout the Earth's atmosphere. Have you ever been to a hot desert where you see these heat waves? This is the origin of mirages. The turbulence of these hot layers makes you think there is water there, and you think it's an oasis. So this is happening in the Earth's atmosphere 100 miles away, but on a smaller scale because it is not as hot. When the beam of light comes down, 
it enters a slightly cooler air mass. When the beam comes down, from one air density to another, the light bends and refracts, like a straw that looks bent in a glass of water. And the beam of light moves from one air density to another while the air masses are still moving. Actually, at any moment, the point of light seen by the eye is constantly changing, jumping around. So, the end effect is that it twinkles. In astronomy, scientists always take long exposure photographs, and because stars move during the shooting period, the image always turns into a blurry spot when the shooting is finished. Isaac Newton thought, what if we put the telescope on top of a mountain? The air there is clear and calm, so to this day, all observatories are built on mountain tops to avoid most of the air mass disturbances occurring at ground level. On Mauna Kea in Hawaii, at an altitude of 14,000 feet, due to favorable observing conditions, the summit of Mauna Kea is one of the best astronomical observing sites in the world. The dry conditions are crucial for submillimeter and infrared astronomy in the electromagnetic spectrum. The summit is above the inversion layer keeping most clouds below the summit, ensuring the air at the summit is dry and free of atmospheric pollution. The atmosphere at the summit is exceptionally stable and free from turbulence, suitable for some of the best astronomical observations in the world. Since Mauna Kea is far from city lights, the sky is very dark, but it is protected by legislation to minimize light pollution in surrounding areas. The darkness allows for the observation of faint celestial objects. Historically, these factors have made Mauna Kea an excellent site for stargazing. But it is still not perfect. If you see a large telescope at night, you'll often see orange laser beams pointing out of the dome. Astronomers have turned to a method called adaptive optics. Sophisticated deformable mirrors controlled by computers that can correct in real time the distortion caused by the turbulence or twinkling of the Earth's atmosphere. Adaptive optics require a fairly bright reference star that is very close to the object under study. High up in the atmosphere is a layer that can be excited to glow by the single wavelength light of an orange sodium laser. This artificial star made by the laser twinkles in the distortion of the Earth's atmosphere. These distortions are measured in real time and a negative pattern of movement produced. This inverted twinkle can be used to distort a thin metal mirror. At the back of the mirror are electric magnets a bit like a sound coil inside a loudspeaker. Hundreds of these bend tiny parts of the mirror, distorting its shape and cancelling out the twinkle. Light from a star near the laser can now be seen in much greater clarity. The concept and principles of adaptive optics were first proposed in 1953 by Horace Babcock of the Hale Observatory, but it surpassed the technological capabilities of the time. In 1983, with President Reagan in office, 
the deterrent power of mutual assured destruction had piqued tensions between the U.S. and the Soviet Union since the advent of the atomic bomb. On March 23, 1983, Reagan proposed the Strategic Defense Initiative, known to the public as Star Wars. Reagan foresaw a new world of defense and employed the nation's top scientists to make it a reality. Money would pour into defense, thereby driving new technological development. I call upon the scientific community in our country, those who gave us nuclear weapons, to turn their great talents now to the cause of mankind and world peace, to give us the means of rendering these nuclear weapons impotent and obsolete. We had essentially um, signed a treaty saying we wouldn't knock out foreign satellites, but uh, we didn't say we wouldn't test devices that were capable of doing so. The Department of Defense took Horace Babcock's ideas and looked into how they could be applied to their own purposes. In the Air Force was very interested in being able to image objects from the ground using ground-based telescopes, and specifically the objects of interest were, were foreign satellites, spy satellites. After the end of the Cold War, in May 1991, the U.S. military declassified the research data on adaptive optics. With advancements in computers and optics, adaptive optics technology became widely used. Telescopes equipped with adaptive optics systems could overcome the imaging distortion caused by atmospheric turbulence, significantly improving spatial resolution by about an order of magnitude, achieving or approaching its theoretical diffraction limit. The first large astronomical telescope equipped with an adaptive optics system was the 3.6-meter New Technology Telescope built by the European Southern Observatory in Chile. More and more large ground-based optical-slash-infrared telescopes are now equipped with this system. One of the main reasons astronomers built the Hubble telescope was to avoid air mass disturbances in the atmosphere. Putting it in space avoids the blurring problem. Once we can compensate on Earth, the unique advantage of the Hubble telescope diminishes. Star light, star bright. The first star I see tonight. I wish I may, I wish I might. Have the wish I wish tonight. So if you always wish upon the first star at night, but your wish hasn't come true, it's because the star you wished upon was a planet, not a star. Planets are so close to us almost in our backyard. The planet's jump between air masses, due to the surrounding disk, doesn't make you notice significant changes in the planet's brightness. So, that's also why they say if it doesn't twinkle, it's probably a planet, and most of the time, they're right. <laughs>